we have the potential for a significant coastal flooding on the east coast of Florida, and we are not even tracking a storm. I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we are going to track why that is and just want you to be aware that this is going to happen, that we can have significant impacts. Again, we're going to get all into that before we dive in. If you want to stay updated this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Of course, we talk all things weather in Florida, across the country. And of course, when it comes to hurricane season, we'll keep you updated. So please make sure you subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button as well if you enjoy the content and find this content informative. All right, coastal flood warnings are up. This is going to be from Sunday through Tuesday morning especially in this dark green color here from Volusia County into Flagler County, parts of St. John's, into Duval County, and into southeast Georgia. This is going to be because of higher than normal tides. This is not from rain. There is no storm out at sea. I'll show you why this is occurring in just one second. But essentially, we're going to have higher than normal tides because the Atlantic is going to be pushed further inland in this lime green color in parts of Brevard and then parts of southeast Georgia as well. And then inland areas along the river, we have a coastal flood advisory, meaning that flooding is still expected, but it's going to be on the minor side. That darker forest green color is where it could be significant. In Volusia County, if you live there, pay close attention. We're going to get into you in specifics in just one second, but it could be really nasty, of course, given the lack of seawall and dunes. And there's a lot of spots across the East Coast that is like that. Here, that are like that. Here is why it's happening big chunk of high pressure is the main reason it's anchored over the mid-atlantic and into the northeast all of this blue color here is the footprint of this area of high pressure we have a weak little area of low pressure out over bermuda the two areas don't like each other much whenever you have a big change in pressure over a relatively small area it increases what we call the pressure gradient force meteorologically basically the bigger the difference in pressure here, the stronger the winds in between. You get clockwise flow around high pressure, counterclockwise flow around low pressure. So the two of those systems out there are going to combine to create a very strong and very persistent northeast wind right on into Florida that is going to help to push the Atlantic Ocean further inland than it normally would be. I'm showing you the storm surge forecast. We would typically show this in a storm, in a hurricane. I want to stress again, there is no hurricane out there. There is no storm out there. It's basically because of that huge difference in, difference in pressure over the mid-Atlantic and over the North Atlantic, creating these higher than normal tides. Anyway, I mentioned Volusia County, especially. Of course, we all know it. We saw the video. If you live there, we were impacted significantly. And that's an understatement by Hurricanes Ian and Nicole. There is a lack of protection all up and down the eastern coast, the east coast of Florida. Dunes have been washed away. Seawalls are gone. And especially in those areas, Daytona Beach Shores, Wilbur by the Sea, watching you especially for the potential for that significant flooding as we're going to have that strong northeasterly wind pushing the Atlantic. Anyway, we could see storm surge flooding, coastal flooding of about one to three feet above normal. and could even be a little bit higher than that. So above that normal high tide, just add about three feet more of water, potentially more for that. Same deal for us into Palm Coast, into Beverly Beach, into Marineland, into parts of Duval County, St. John's County as well. Also notice this. You see the colors starting to highlight here. This is the St. John's River. For those not familiar with the St. John's, that river flows from south to north very, very slowly. So as this water is flowing south, that strong northeasterly breeze, wind I should say, is forcing that water back down. And we have that buildup of the water as you have that convergence there. So in and around Duval County, you could have anywhere from three to six feet of storm surge, meaning, I shouldn't say storm surge, really that, that flooding, because there's no storm out there again. But because of that convergence, that buildup of water, that would cause the St. John's River to rise again. We could have that into Aster as well. And then down the St. John's River through Volusia County. So if you live around the river, be careful of that. The, I don't want to say good news because of the lack of rain. The river has significantly dropped in level. It may help in this situation. Of course, we have need, need rain. But I want to be clear in the sense that this flooding that's going to be brought on, the potential anyway for it from Sunday through Tuesday, is not going to be because of rain. It's going to be because of the higher than normal tides. And the high tide cycle, which we will get into, uh, that we are going to be watching for the most is going to be Sunday night at around 11 o'clock. That is going to be the most significant high tide. 
and then again uh, about midnight, Monday night into Tuesday morning. That is going to be another very significant high tide. Those are going to be the two biggest high tides of the high tide cycle over the next few days. So I want to make sure that everybody is aware of that. And on top of that higher than normal high tide, we're going to have big breaking waves. Anywhere from 8 to 10 feet, especially along the Volusia-Flagler coastline, out at sea a little bit. Not a good few days to take the boat out. Again, this is Monday morning. You see the wave heights increasing from 12 to 18 feet in that little bullseye. It's best to keep the boat at home over the next few days. All right, so I mentioned that there's no storm. But with that northeast wind, we are going to generate more rain. Now, the rain we could desperately use, this is not going to impact that coastal flooding. Remember, that is just, not just, but that is because of the ocean being pushed in by that strong and persistent northeast wind. And we had the full moon, so tides are higher than normal anyway. But we have those downpours developing again late Easter Sunday, and then we're going to have more widespread, more widespread rain moving back into the most of the state of Florida, scattered but widespread through Monday. Some of that could be heavy at times. You see that really continuing to spread out through Monday afternoon. That is going to be 4 o'clock for you, and we'll continue to keep rain around. Look at the heavy rain for us in southeast Florida, where we do not have a drought currently in Miami. We've already had some heavy rain, but we're going to watch for some flooding in Miami from the rainfall. So not from the coastal flooding, but from the rainfall because that rain could be heavy at times. So heads up in Miami. There's not a ton of rain coming. Okay, so this is not going to completely bust a drought, but we desperately need it. And this is the perfect example. Just what the doctor ordered to start to chip away at the drought. You don't want it all at once. You don't want a flood, but quarter of an inch to an inch of rain. Widespread is coming from Sunday into Monday night, and we'll have a chance for more rain later on in the week. If you want to check up on that part of the forecast, you can click the link in the description. There's more on uh, the widespread rain coming later in the week. But nonetheless, we will take this for sure. Remember, the flooding that is coming along the East Coast is not from rain. So I just want to make sure that everybody is paying close attention, especially in the areas that have lost the protection of the, of the sea lost the seawalls, lost the dunes, whatever, that were taken out by Hurricane Ian and Nicole, to just realize that it does not take a storm to have significant coastal impacts. So I want to just make sure I feel for you guys that have to do this again and have not been able to get the seawalls or dunes repaired just yet. I know we have some of the um, some of the Tiger Bays coming down and being replaced with the other means to protect it, but still, those are going to be the areas most susceptible, susceptible to this coastal flooding from Sunday through Tuesday morning. We will see gradual improvements in that department as we go through Tuesday and through the middle part of the week post-Easter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you want to stay up to date on the weather, please hit that subscribe button. If you love the weather in general, also find our only weather channel. That's called Just Weather. Put the link in the description. Consider subscribing to that as well. Thank you guys again for tuning in. We will catch you next time.